There we go. Hi, everybody. See you all coming in. How fun. I love who's here, by the way. This is going to be so much fun. We are going to be talking about what to do for your next step, which is so important because I know that sometimes we get stuck like with the big vision of things and then we start to make the list of all the things that need to happen <laughs> and the list gets so long, right? So I'm excited to be talking to you all about this today. So for anybody that doesn't know me, <laughs> I'm Carrie Marshall. I'm a certified master coach and I get to help people every single day on their goals. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to make sure that you leave knowing exactly what you want to do next for your goal. So what I want from all of you is I want you to sit first and pick one goal. Now, sometimes we have many goals that we're going after and that's okay. You know, sometimes people say like only go after one goal, but like, I like to say that sometimes that's really important when we have this very, very focused thing, but oftentimes we have several things going on in our lives. And so I know for instance, that there's some people on this call right now that are like getting ready to move and building a business all at the same time. And so for this call today, what I want you to do is just pick one goal that you're going to be specifically thinking about. But what we're going to teach you today is a process that you can use for every single goal that you have. So a couple things that I want to tell you. First off is use the Q&A. If you don't know where it is, it's at the very bottom. And you can just go ahead and write any questions or comments or anything in there for me. But then also, I'm going to be bringing people on. Anybody that wants coaching, anybody that wants help with their specific thing, go ahead and raise your hand and we'll be doing coaching throughout. Because like I said, I want every single person on this call to leave with a, yes, I know exactly what to do. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to talk a little bit about the process and then we're going to dive into you personally. Uh, yeah, Sarah's like, I can't get on. I have my kids. Is that okay? Absolutely, Sarah. Just use the Q&A box and you can even write down your specific goals and we'll talk it through in the, in the Q&A box. So that's totally fine. I get it. <laughs> okay, so I want you to think about your goal. So one of the reasons I started to coach on goals was because I noticed that I was always telling myself that I wasn't really great at goals, but I kept hitting these goals that I would set kind of almost on the side. And so I'd have these big goals that had to do with like my business. And I would always see that I would not hit those. And I would always stay in this space of like, I really want it, but it's not happening. But then hitting a goal with reading a book, I could do that easily. Um, hitting a goal with uh, my hobbies, things like that have always come pretty easy for me. And so I started to think about the difference between the two. Now, maybe you see this in your own life. Like for instance, if you're a mom or a parent, I like to say that as parents, we can help and hit goals with our kids really easily. So you think about little different milestones of your kid's life, getting them to walk, helping potty train them, um, reading, uh, going off to college, getting those college entrance things done, right? We are really good at helping our kids hit their goals, but oftentimes what happens is we start to have these thoughts about ourselves and our own goals and desires that holds us back from actually doing the exact same process with ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> Sarah's like, yes, absolutely me. Yes, right? That's what happens is we find ourselves that will absolutely show up for other people and help them with theirs, but then maybe we're not doing it for ourselves. Now, for me, what I saw was when I didn't have a lot of pressure on myself, it was easier for me to do a goal. So much easier for me to set a swimming goal and be able to work on it every single day than when I had a lot of pressure on myself. So I want you to think right now about your goal and go ahead and pop it in the Q&A if you want to. Like, what is your goal? What are you wanting to accomplish? What's important to you? Now, I want you to think about how am I making this harder than it needs to be? Because often that's what happens is we start to make our goal harder than it needs to be for several different reasons, right? I was putting a lot of emphasis and 
pressure on my business because I had all of these thoughts about, I need it to work. Um, I would love to not have to do um, nannying. I was a nanny when I started this business. I was like, I really need to make money so that I don't have to do this. Uh, Aaron says, bring in 100K ASAP for a new house. Yes, Aaron and I have talked about this. Awesome. That's a perfect goal, right? But then once again, Aaron, um, you and I have talked, but once we put all that pressure, right? I need it right now. So when we talk about the goal, we want to have very specific, just like Aaron say, showed, Aaron knows exactly when she needs the money. She knows the exact amount that she needs. And now the big question mark is how, right? How am I going to make this happen? So when we're going after goals, I'm going to break it down for you because I really want to share with you the secret to hitting your goals successfully, like the majority of the time. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to look at all of our goals and our goals are essentially visions, right? They're vision for the future. They're kind of that thing that we've always wanted. So I like to think about this as an altitude thing, like when we're flying, right? So the highest altitude that you can get for your life is a vision for the future. So when we talk about a vision for our future, like I said, where it's like we can see everything. I live in Utah and every time I fly, I always love to look out the window at the mountains because it gives me such a different perspective than when I'm hiking in those same mountains. I love to be able to look and be able to say like, oh, that's where that is. Or I look at ski resorts that I've been to. I love to be able to try and figure out what ski resort I've been to and the, and the, uh, the actual uh, trails that I've been down. And so when we're talking about our vision, that's what we're looking for is we're looking for an overview of our life. What do I want to be able to see? Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of drop altitude a little bit and come down to your goals. So your goals help you create a vision for your future. So if we were to use Erin's um, example of her home, the vision for her future is bigger than just moving. The goal is to move. The vision is create a better life for our children, get them in the right uh, school district, right? Create memories, opportunities, experiences with our neighbors, this, this. That's the vision for the future. The goal is move, right? Aaron says it's really 200k but that's out of my comprehension perfect <laughs> but isn't that interesting though that we'll take our goal and this is part of it actually Aaron so I'm glad you mentioned that is <clears throat> sometimes we take our vision and then we think that it's too big that's too much that I need I don't see it happening in the future and so then what we do is we start to play small right so then we say okay if it's not that then it's this and so, like I said, we have a vision and then we go down to a goal. Now, goals have all of this belief around them, right? You need to go big. You need to do it this way. There's so many systems and operating things around goals, but really goals are just a desire with a task list. That's it. You have a desire for hundred K and now we need to make a task list in order to do it. Now, I come from a place that were to-do lists and checking those off, all in. <laughs> I grew up doing it. I love the little check marks, but maybe that's not for you. So tell me, are you a checklist person or not? So for me, when I was just like, oh, my vision is just goals. So, you know, I have a vision of being this awesome, awesome uh, swimmer right? I told you swimming is pretty easy for me to set goals around. So I'm like, I want to be an awesome open water swimmer. So my goal is to do an open water swim, swim every day, right? These are goals. And so then from there, I just go down and I say, what's the desire? Well, I desire to swim better. And what's the task list? So now from the goal, all I'm doing is I'm writing down a list of things I think are going to get me to that space. Now, some of you on here, Brian goes, yeah, but I get stuck. Let me read this perfect, Brian. He says, I get stuck thinking that I only know half of what I'm supposed to be doing. And then I try and figure out the other half and that makes me super anxious. Okay, Brian, that is exactly 
why overwhelm sets in because we think that we need to have it all figured out. So here's what I want to offer for everybody is your goals and desires are going to happen differently than what you write on the list. The task list is to start you to get momentum, but things are absolutely going to change on that list. Now you might do everything on that list. That might be part of getting there, but that list, the task list that we're talking about is simply for momentum. And this is so important because often we get on the list and we might even get to the bottom of the list and think, well, I did all of the things and it didn't work and I'm not anywhere closer to my goal. So I must be doing it wrong. Um, it didn't work. But we want to simply remember that the task list is for momentum. So think back about your goal. And I want you to start I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about the task list. What is it that I need to do? So going back to Aaron's house, it's like, I need this money ASAP. Okay. That's the desire. Now, what is the task list? Erin is an artist and she's also an interior designer. She has a lot of amazing skills, but so Erin's going to sit and say, okay, hundred K, what do I need to do? There are other people on here that are coaches. Brian's a contractor. So we have a lot of different professions, a lot of different goals that people are going after, but think about your desire and then think about the task list. So let's break this down with my business. So when I started to see that I was able to take a hobby and really always hit the mark with my goals, I was like, oh, what is happening over here that's not happening over here with my business? And it was the fact that I, with my swimming, quilting, whatever it was in my hobby list, I was putting zero pressure on it, but I also was really quick to take action. So I, I mentioned that I am a quilter in my previous life, <laughs> but I used to make, I was in, uh, I, I was in a church group and I was the leader for all of these teenage girls. And there are about 40 teenage girls. Well, I decided that I was going to make every single one of them a quilt before our summer girls camp that we would go to. I just thought that that would be really important. And it felt like something that I was excited about. Now, 40 quilts is insane. It really is insane. <laughs> it's not just a one quilt, 40 quilts. And I had about nine months to do it. So what I did was I started to think about what is this and why is it important to me? So once again, vision. Well, I had a vision that every single girl would feel loved and that every single girl would feel like someone was thinking about them. And I wanted it to be something that I almost was thinking about them as I was doing the quilt. And so I wanted it to feel personal as well. I didn't want to give away 40 identical quilts. I wanted every single quilt to feel like it was connected to the girl when I was making it. So that was the vision. Now I had this vision in my head that they'd all bring them to camp and that'd be super cool. <laughs> but I was like, that's up to them. I don't really care. It doesn't matter. So then I went back to the goal. What's the goal? The goal is to make quilts. The desire is that every girl will feel loved. And so then I got to the task list. I need to buy fabric. I need to buy batting. That's that middle piece. And then I need to start to find a pattern that's pretty simple for me to do. And then I'm going to have to schedule time to quilt probably every single day. And I had littles at home and I was a nanny. So I was like, okay, that's my challenge right there is the timing of it all. What's that going to look like? Now notice that all I've done is I've started with a vision and then I've moved down to a goal. Now from the goal, I'm going to go down to a desire. What's the desire? And the desire is basically like a why. Why do I want to do this? And then the next is tasks. Simply put the tasks. And as you put the task, what's going to come up is just like me. Now you're going to start to come up against obstacles. So let's talk about the obstacles. Where do you see when you start writing your task list down? Where do you see your obstacles? I had a bunch of fabric. 
<laughs> Anybody that is in the realm of sewing knows that you just kind of create a stash. So for me, fabric was not an obstacle. That was not even part of it. I was like, I have enough fabric for 40 quilts. Absolutely. So mine went back to two things. I found two obstacles. Number one was time. Number two was I knew about 20 of the girls pretty well. The other 20 were in different classes. The other 20 were um, girls that I really didn't have a lot of interaction with. And so when I went back up to my vision and said, well, I want them to be personal, that was an obstacle. I was like, there's 20 girls that I don't know if they're like into sports. I don't know if they're, you know, um, if they like bright colors, not bright colors. Like I didn't really know them. So I had two obstacles and this is what you're going to find with your own task list is that as you write down tasks, you're going to start to eat. I already come up with obstacles. So put a couple of your obstacles in the Q and a, if you want to, like I said, we're going to coach in just a little bit and we can talk about all of this. I really, anybody that's here, I absolutely want you to get on if you want to, it's going to be so fun. So then we're going to start to come up with obstacles. Now, here's what I want to offer for all of you is that obstacles are opportunities. It's a way of showing yourself how you can show up and solve problems pretty simply. So I had this obstacle of time and I thought to myself, if I could have an hour a day, that would really make a difference. Now I had littles like from baby to, I mean, six, six kids at home. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what is this going to look like? So I started to look and I said, okay, well, the baby goes down at this time. So what I did was I was like, what if I put, a, what if I take my, my sewing machine instead of in my sewing room, I can sew upstairs in the TV room with the kids. They can watch a movie. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. And that can be my sewing time. I can put snacks on the floor <laughs> and I'm there so that I'm not in a different room so that we're all together, but I can sit and sew. So that's what we ended up doing. So I took something of time. Usually when the baby went down, we do other things, you know, but instead I was like, you know what, this is the perfect time. The one, one kid that needs me to hold them the most will be asleep and I can start to sew. So that's what I did. So when we talk about obstacles, I want you to think about your obstacle. What feels hard about it? Do you know the answer, but it just feels, feels challenging to do it? Does it feel like maybe you don't even know the answer for that? We get in overwhelm so often because we tell ourselves that we don't know. I was just with my business. I knew that I wanted to have an email list. It's part of my vision is being able to really connect with my audience outside of social media. Cause I've seen so many people's social media is like get cut down or, you know, somebody take it over. So I was like, okay, I really want to have a connection to my audience that's outside of social media. So that was the vision, right? The desire was to be able to communicate. So then I started to look at the, the obstacles, the, the task list. I'm like, I have to find a email provider. I have to do this. Now for some people that are on here, you guys already have email lists that are running really well. You have thousands of people, but for me, that felt like a big obstacle. I was like, who do you actually pick? Do you use, um, you know, this one or that one? There's about 500 different email providers that you can use. And so that the opportunity was for me to be able to make the decision, but the decision itself was holding me back. And how many of you can like say yes to that? You have decisions that need to be made, but you're stalling on the decision. So when we have these tasks and decisions need to be made, I'm really going to encourage you to do a little bit of research, a half an hour or less, unless it's like a big thing. If any of y'all are trying to decide who to marry or something, please don't just spend a half an hour on it. <laughs> but most of the time, like for instance, an email provider, I needed to do about 15 minutes of research. I needed to decide if I wanted to pay or if I wanted it to be free. Well, I told myself like, I'm going to do a free version until I hit a certain amount. So 
once again, I made the decision quickly so that then when all of these paid uh, email things came up, I knew I wasn't looking at those. I was like, I want to do a free version till I hit like a thousand people. So make decisions quickly so that you can really start to see what's going on for you. We can make decisions so that we can take all of the possibilities off of the table and say, yes, I do want an email list, but I'm not going to pay for it. So there goes all of those, right? Now I have 10 in front of me. So the next thing I want to do is now I want to ask myself a different question. Do I want email templates or not? I was like, yes, for sure. I want an email template. I don't want to spend my time creating that. Okay. There goes five. Notice that when I make decisions, the task list goes from this big email, like create an email list to now make a decision about this, make a decision about that. So it becomes easier for us to make decisions when we can create the task list. So any questions about that? We wanna just make sure that we're making decisions quickly. A half an hour of research, unless it's a big investment of our time or money. Like I said, if we're marrying somebody, we're gonna to wanna to spend a little bit more time. Same thing, if you're gonna to come to a mastermind, I personally, when I host masterminds, I want people to be there for the right reasons, but I want them to feel like it was the best money that they spent. And so you're going to wanna do a little bit more research, right? I just invested in my own coach. I always invest in coaching myself and it was $6,000. And so I was like, okay, that's not, that's not nothing. So I'm like, I want to talk to her. I want to see what I'm going to get out of the program. I want to do this. I, so whenever there's time or money involved, I want you to then think like, how much time do I want to spend? So instead of a half an hour, I spent like a weekend on that decision. I went and had a consult with her. We talked about what we're going to get. She kind of gave me behind the scenes access so I could look at the program. And I was like, okay, now that I've done a weekend, I did probably two hours of research. And then I gave myself space to think about it. So then yesterday I was like, I'm all in, let's go. So time and money are the two things that we want to make sure that we're spending. But most of the time, am I going to pay for something or is it going to be free? I can make that decision really quickly. So don't stay stuck in these small decisions, okay? Every single goal that you want to go after starts with just making a decision and then executing on it. That's it. It really does break down to that. Every time I'm coaching people, it's on, well, what's the decision? And then what's the executable on that? What do you want to, what do you need to go and do? And that brings me to the next thing. And then we're going to get to some coaching. So if you want coaching, raise your hand and we'll just start putting you guys in order of like, who's going to go first and stuff. But here's what, what I want to show you is that when we're making decisions, the next thing is executable. So actionable things to do. Now, this is important. And all of you know that like coaching, we talk a lot about thought work and all of that, but you absolutely have to take action. <laughs> we can't think our way to success. We can think our way to get so that we can start to do things to have success. But thinking thought work can only get you so far. Now we need to actually execute on things. So now we're going to go back to that task list and we're going to really look at what are the next steps that I need to take? And this is where we're going to do a lot of coaching is I want you to really know the next step that you need to take for your business, your goal, whatever it is. So as we take action, we want to look at longevity of the action. So for instance, if we go back to the quilt thing, I knew I needed to continuously sew every single day. It wasn't something that I could bust out in a weekend. Now I could go and do an intense weekend so that I could get three or four quilts done, but that still wasn't going to get me to the finish line. So when we talk about action, a lot of times you're going to need to take that action over and over and over again. And that this is an important part. When I'm building a coaching business, I can't just go and make a couple of offers on a weekend and then stop and say, great, my business is done. Building a business, a coaching business takes effort every single week. I need to decide how many people I'm going to talk to. I need to make offers. I need to remind people that I'm a coach. I need to decide what programs and things I want to offer people, right? 
So you need to look at the actionable items and ask yourself, how many times do I need to do this? So the one thing that I see people do is they'll start to take action. And what happens is they almost like stall out because they start to tell themselves it's not working. This isn't right. I haven't had any success. And so they stop making offers. They stop, stop doing things that are so important to them. So what I like to do, and this is what I want all of you to do, is I want you to look at the actionable list and I want you to put in there how long you need to do it. And then we're going to sit, call and uh, put in checkpoints. So checkpoints are where we're going to actually be able to evaluate what's working and what's not, because we don't want to always continuously do blind action. Blind action means I'm just doing it because I'm, I think I'm supposed to, but I'm not checking in to see if it's the right thing. So for instance, I can make an offer for um, a week at my house. <laughs> I might come and spend a week with me. We'll do coaching. You'll help me with my kids. <laughs> Now, if I continue to make that offer over and over again for a year, but I knew that in the first month, no one said yes, then what I've done is I've taken blind action for a full year without ever checking in and seeing what the data is telling me. So we want to create checkpoints with what you're doing. Now, the reason that checkpoints are so important is number one, it helps us stay in action without doubting, questioning, or whatever, until the checkpoint. But then the checkpoint is what gives us the opportunity to adjust and adapt based on the data that's coming in. So let me use an example. So I have a client that's um, just launched a program. And so she said, I'm gonna take action. I'm gonna send out an email every single day until I think it's until next Monday. And I said, great, that's a great checkpoint. Well, today we were coaching and she said, I think I'm going to change this and this and this. And I said, stop. <laughs> I'm like, is it checkpoint time? And she's like, no. I said, okay, why are you wanting to change everything? She's like, it feels like it's not working. It feels this way. It feels this way. And I was like, okay, why did we set the checkpoint for Monday? She said, because I have a really good copy email this week. We wanted to give it the weekend where my podcast launched about it. It's like, yes. She's like, oh yes, that's why we're waiting. And I said, yeah. And absolutely on Monday, if the data comes in that nothing's happened, then absolutely we're going to adjust and adapt. Absolutely. But Monday is our checkpoint day. So right before I got on this call, she's like, somebody bought, I'm so excited. I'm like, yes, this is why we don't pivot, right? Sometimes our actions need to, to simmer. Sometimes our actions need to sit for a little bit. Sometimes we need to take the action over and over and over again so that we can build on momentum. So set checkpoints for yourself and checkpoints doesn't matter. You can do a checkpoint after 48 hours. You can do a checkpoint after a week. You can do a checkpoint at every quarter. And this is how I set mine up is anytime I'm starting something new, I do a checkpoint 48 hours after to just say like, do I need to adjust and adapt anything that needs changing? And then after that, I go a week. And then after that, I go a month. And then usually all of my checkpoints land in a quarter. So all of my checkpoints at a quarter, I'm checking in on everything. I'm like, how's my business going? How's webinars? How's the classes? How's my emails? How's this? So I usually do a big checkpoint um, in a quarter, every quarter. So I'm doing them four times a year. Then I also like, for instance, I'll do a checkpoint after this. I'll say, how did that class go? And I'll check in with myself. What needs to be adjusted? What needs to be adapted? What went well? What would have served people better? And then I use that data to then go out and make the next offer for a class. All right. So checkpoints are important, but the one thing that I want to offer is sometimes the things that are going to get you to the goal are the most boring. That's what, exactly what everybody wanted to hear, right? <laughs> sometimes we do need to do things like write an email every week, and maybe that's not exciting for you, but it's the, it's the effort that goes in and consistency at which it goes in. So I know um, we have somebody on the call that's a volleyball coach 
And if Aaron, if Andrea and I were to be talking about volleyball and I was like, okay, Andrea, I did this thing for a weekend. I did a, you know, a clinic with volleyball and I learned how to set perfectly, but I just, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Andrea would be like, stop it, go out and get your reps in. Right. That's what it is for your goal. Sometimes you need the reps behind it. So if Andrea has taught me how to set and she's like, yes, you know exactly what to do. You know, the skills, it's pretty basic. Andrea is going to then go and tell me to go and do that over and over and over again. And then she's going to say, and then send me a video of you in a week. And then I'll see if there's anything that we need to adjust and adapt, but you know, the foundation of setting a volleyball. So it's the same exact thing with your goals. You know now a task list. And like I said, we're going to talk about the next step for you so that you know exactly what to be doing and where the reps need to come in. But sometimes then it just comes to doing the reps, the consistency. Momentum builds because of consistency. It doesn't build because we're out trying to do all the things all of the time. But we've got to get the reps in so that we can see what's working and what's not and then make those small adjustments. Okay, hey, so let's kind of wrap up really fast and then we'll start coaching. So remember that your vision is going to be that, that bird's eye view, right? What do I want for my life? Then we're going to create goals around that. Then we're going to take that goal and we're going to break it down to what's the desire around the goal. Why do I want this? And then a task list. The task list is then going to be broken down into where do I already see that I might come up against some problems? And then also like room to grow is what I like to call it at the bottom of it. You're going to find, figure out things that you need that you didn't know you needed before. So and a great example of this is like my email. Um, I picked an email template that has a picture at the top. I didn't know that I was going to want or need stock photos. So now that I like picked a template and now I need these, I was like, oh, I should probably get a like a library of stock photos that I can use in these. That wasn't on my list before, but now it is, right? Does that make sense? So we're going to have room to grow on the task list. We're going to look at the obstacles and then we're going to make, start making decisions really quickly. Half hour research decision made, or even less than that, right? I didn't need a half an hour to decide if I was doing paid or free email list. It was like, which do I prefer? That was like a two minute decision. So no more than a half an hour, unless it includes a lot of time or money. And then we're going to start making decisions. And then at the end of that, we're going to have an actionable item list of things that we need to do. Then we're going to set a checkpoint and do that thing until we hit the checkpoint. And then you can decide, was it beneficial? What needs to be adjusted or adapted? Do I need to pivot completely? Okay. All right. Let's get to some coaching. Erin, I'm going to come to you first. Let's see if I can, oh, I do remember how to do this. <laughs> so what happens when you're going to get coached is you're going to come on. I'm going to promote you to panelist. And then just like Aaron popped up here, we're going to be able to see each other and talk. <gasps> Hi, Hi. I miss Aaron. Aaron and I go way back. We've been, we've been uh, coaching friends for a while. So Aaron, Aaron's the one that's moving everybody. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, hey, my friend, tell me what's going on. Let's talk this through, figure out what to do next. So in order to move, I need money. And yeah, that might be a thing. Oh my God. <laughs> and where we're trying to get to is I don't want to go into a fixer upper. And, and the price point right now is with the neighborhoods that we're trying to get there, they're kind of fixer uppers. So okay. You know, we came into this house and um, in the industry and I made it amazing. And we don't want to leave all of this gorgeous comfort that we created. So the thought about going into this new house with starting over and going back to zero, we're not so excited about it. So we're not really taking action. Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell me why you talked about, you know, the gorgeous comfort. Tell me why though, this is a thing that you're willing to do. Why are you wanting to move? 
my daughter needs to go to a better middle school. Okay. That's a, that's a, that's a huge reason, right? Mm -hmm. And you and I know that there's, there's reason behind having her leave the middle school that she's at right now. Uh, Yeah. We don't even want her to walk in the door there. She's it's next year. Mm -hmm. And we knew this was coming. You know, we knew obviously seventh grade, we knew this was coming and we just, um, we're dragging our feet, dragging our feet. Now it's upon us. And it's like, you you have to stop, Mm -hmm. you know, stop thinking about it. Stop talking about it. We have to take action. Mm -hmm. We have to take action. So I got the killer aggressive realtor. You and I said, that was the most amazing thing that you said to me because it was instantaneous. Go get this aggressive realtor. And I knew who that was. And I reached out to him. We were on the phone within 20 minutes of that DM and it was done. And he has a team, you know, those things started coming into play. Now we're at the point where you got to, you got to pay for it. You want it, you need to pay for it. So great. I'll, you know, that's awesome. And Uh, I just want to bring that money in. I don't want to, there's no, no, I don't tell myself, no, I tell myself, all right, get this together. Okay. So let's talk about options for getting money quickly for you. Where do you see for yourself? We're just going to talk about yourself right now and not your husband, but let's just talk about you. What are your options right now for getting money? I would love to sell my, um, consultations I do the room readings and the room readings are fast they're you know one day one day and not even a whole day but for me it's a fast um you know I I just know how to do it I I know what I know and what the customer gets is when they walk into their house or they don't feel quite right or they don't feel like a hundred percent oh my god we love our house we love our room we have a bedroom that we feel comfortable and relaxed and at peace like i create sleep sanctuaries and i can i get energy fields from spaces Mm -hmm. so i would love to get my eye on as many rooms as i can and sell as many of these consultations as i can i have paintings downstairs that I would love to start moving these paintings. Mm-hmm. They're done, they're ready, they're framed, they're gorgeous, ship them out. Right. Um, a full service would be great. A full service project that brings in about a uh, full service for a house to be specific, that would bring in a good chunk of that. So let's talk about what you're doing. So there's three things right there that you already know. Uh, Room readings, which are fast, instant results for money for you. And then, like you said, it gives your client something to actually uh, dream of, have a vision for, and then go out and make happen. Paintings that are ready to go, you could ship those today. And then full, full home would be something that could come in, but would you get, how quickly would that money come in? Um, that would take a couple months. Yeah. That would okay. take a couple months from like start to start to finish. Okay. That's okay. Cause what we want to do is look at how we're just kind of creating that space of like, that is possible to do, but we want to kind of look at those things that could be there fast. So what are you doing in order to get out that you have paintings and room readings and that you do full service? How, how do you actually tell people about those three things? I have been, um, consistent. I'm happy to report. I've been consistent in my own way. I, I, once a week on social media. Okay. And I don't think that's enough, but it's been consistent. So, um, okay. What? Okay. So are you willing to up the consistency there? Yeah, sure. And I have the content right now. I've been writing blogs and articles about how I design, why I design, why does, 
why does it matter? Um, what's the difference? Like what's luxury? Luxury doesn't have to be expensive. It's just personal. So what do these things mean and how does it translate to your brain mm -hmm. and how does that translate to your life? You awesome. conduct yourself differently. So I have all these articles about that. So what I want to offer for you is I think that it's the consistency behind what you're doing, right? So when you say like, I'm consistent once a week, it's like, great. Now you have a voice, you know what to say. You have like a library of content to use. Now, what we want to do is we want to up the consistency, meaning posting on social media. Um, you know, where else are you going to want to show up? Is it on social media? Is it in person? We've talked about that before of like, if we have something that we want, like money that needs to come for a down payment for a house, then what we want to do is we want to think, okay, what am I willing to do in order to make that happen? Am I, I willing to post every single day and then make offers, create a link for room readings? I think you already have that, but so that it's so easy for people to buy so that's what I want you to focus on for that next thing is I want you to think about, okay, I need to up the concentration of consistency because we need to start bringing this money in. The next thing is with the paintings. I want you to think about, you know, cause you're in the interior design field. I know that you've already done this, but I'm like, okay, who do you need to reach out to, to say like, yes, I have paintings ready to go. Because a lot of times what's happening with the design industry is there's that whole backlog of people waiting. And it's like, how are you going to solve that pain prob problem for them with art and say, I know a lot of it, everybody's waiting for this and that. I have something available and can be to you overnight if you wanted it. Okay. So that's the to-dos. Let's talk about the mindset. How are you feeling? You said like when you put in there, like actually it's kind of 200, but that feels like way too crazy. Right. <laughs> but where's your mindset at as you kind of have this goal to make a hundred thousand for your, for, for moving? Carrie, I have had the goal of bring, netting 10,000 a month for years mm -hmm. I, and I haven't hit it. I have, I hit it twice. I don't want to say I haven't hit it. I hit it twice. And I, and then literally it was quarter one, 2020. And then COVID hit in March and I was set up to do it again in Q2. And I lost the wine cellar that I was doing. And the wine cellar was the whole basement and all that yeah. stuff. And it was a big blow. Yeah. And, it was a big, it was tough. So, um, but I haven't gotten that 10. And that's why I would, you know, that's the block right there. If you mm -hmm. can't get 10, that's 120. Right. And that's, yeah, I was going to say that's using the past against yourself, right? That's where you're using the past. What you don't give yourself credit for is that someone, the wine seller said, yes. Yeah. You cast a vision for that. And so, like you said, like it fell through for different reasons, but what you do is you tell yourself like, oh, see, I can't do it. It's not happening. It's this. And you totally block that. You're really great at giving vision that you do have people say yes to your design because of what you do. So then when we're making offers and doing consistency, consistently posting, we're posting from that space of, I've never done this. I, I'm not consistent. I've not, instead of, yeah, all that happened was they made a choice and you're not giving yourself the credit of people say yes to me. <laughs> people buy my paintings. Now the consistency part is where we're like, and now I'm learning to be consistent at making offers and saying, and getting people to go all the way through, right? I'm learning how to make an offer for a room reading and then instantly getting that done. That's what I want you to focus on because it's not about your belief in yourself. It's like reminding yourself, people say yes to me all the time. 
-hmm. Now we're just trying to get from point A to finish. And that's, can, the, that's the thought that I have to keep in my head because people yeah. say no to me all the time. And Absolutely. that's, that's oh. But sometimes we're making offers to the wrong people, right? Mm -hmm. Like I just made an offer to somebody the other day and they were like, no. And I kind of laughed and I was like, yeah, that's what you get when you make an offer to the wrong person, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this person doesn't need what I just offer them. But so that's what I want you to remind yourself of is like the next thought that I want you to believe is that you know exactly who to talk to and that you're willing to, just like we talked about that realtor, you weren't like, I don't know. And this is kind of scary. And you were like, I know exactly who I need to talk to. And then you went out and made it happen. Now I want you to take your own services and do that exact same process. I know who to talk to, and I'm going to go out and make some offers. There's going to be yeses and no's all in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. hundred K happens a thousand times, a thousand dollars at a time. That's the other thing, right? And you and I both know that. Yeah. So when we go to 100K, sometimes that can feel really overwhelming instead of coming back and being like, it's one offer at a time. Like Starbucks started with like one coffee. <laughs> and now it's like those multi billion dollar company, but it's like, but it starts with offers. And people say yes and no to Starbucks all the time, but they just are like, great. We have some people and now we're just really good at making offers for this. That's what I want you to focus on is you're like that mentality, like you had with the realtor. I know who I want to work with and I'm going to go out and make contacts. Now just start making offers. Okay. All right, my friends. And don't get vexed by the nose, but thank you. Don't so get much. vexed by the nose. Honestly, we all get nose all of the time. And for you, especially, I mean, you and I, like I said, we've coached, but for you, sometimes the nose feels so personal because it's like your art, right? Instead of going like, yeah, they, it's not the right for, fit for their project. Um, maybe they don't like this. It's not about you. It's, they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to an offer. Somebody comes and offers me something at Target and I say, no, it has nothing to do with the lovely person, <laughs> has everything to do with that I just didn't want it. I Yes. And they don't want to spend like, it, there's a whole bunch of money stuff with yeah. them as well. Like I, for me, it's like, oh my God, get this. Your house will be so much better. Just do yeah. it for you. I want you to have it. Yeah. And they're like, no, thanks. Right. <laughs> I just don't know. And so that's why we're always just looking at when no's come in, I'm always like, oh, that had a lot to do with them and nothing to do with me and a little bit to do with my offer. That's it. All right, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carrie. We're good. Okay. Anybody else? Let's check this out. You want to be coached? Just raise your hand. Okay, Brian. Okay, I'm going to read brains. Brains like I'm driving. <laughs> awesome. That's perfect. Okay. I am a contractor, like you mentioned. And what I'm really wanting to do is sell my business. It's been a lot this past year. Sounds like you have a lot of people that are maybe in the design slash contracting business. Yeah, we have a lot of designers and contractors on here. He says, so I'm just kind of done. But where I get stuck is I don't know what to do next. And I know I can sell the business, but then what? <laughs> Great question. Okay, so let's stop right there and then I'll read the rest of it. So you, the goal is to sell the business, it sounds like. That's perfect, okay? So the vision, right? We wanna start with the vision because right now what you have is you have the goal. The goal is to sell the business. And so now what, what I want you to do is I want you to go up to the vision. Like, is the vision more about having time? Is the vision about, um, and I know it says like that you're super stressed with this and it's been really hard to work in the industry with rising costs. Um, what is that? Rising costs, things not being available and then um, unmet expectations of the industry. People think that they should be able to pay what they did three years ago and get the same thing. And that's just not the case. I also have had a really hard time getting people to come and work 
lots of people have just no showed, which is part of contracting, but it's gotten worse. Okay. So it sounds like the vision maybe is something about the stress that's happening with the business. So I want you first to get really clear about the vision. So go up, like I said, you have that goal, but now I want you to go up to the next level and just say, okay, what's the vision? Like, what am I trying to create from this? Like if I sell the business, what is that creating for me that I'm really excited about? So it sounds like you think that stress is going to be gone. You think that some of these problems and some of them will be solved, right? So now I just want you to think about, okay, so first off, let's just kind of talk specifically about selling the business. So there's a desire to sell the business. And then what's the task list? So you're going to need to do a couple of things. You're going to need to get your finances in order so that you can show a prospective buyer, right? That's just something that super comes to mind. You're going to need to go and figure out who to sell it to, maybe get some prospects, have conversations with them. You're going to need to know the projects that you have right now, the projects that are coming up and projections for the future. So that's the task list. Okay. So it sounds like you're probably okay with the task list. It doesn't sound like you have a lot of drama around selling the business. You said it pretty directly. Like I am going to sell the business and it's not a big deal. Perfect. That's great. So the next thing that we want to do now is it's almost like we're creating a new list of a vision of what you want to do. And this is where you say you're stuck. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about what your life, number one, what is your lifestyle right now? Anytime that we're making a transition in our lives, we want to look at lifestyle. And there's three things that we can do with lifestyle. We can keep it the same. We can get more of it, or we can get less of it. So when I was helping one of my clients transition into retirement, he was like, I actually want to have less. Like he's like, I want to have a smaller house. I want to have this, but his wife was on a different page as him. She wanted a bigger house for grandkids and things. She wanted to vacation more. And so that's one of the things that whenever we're transitioning, buying a business, selling a business, um, starting a business or retiring, <laughs> I want you to look at lifestyle first. So think about your lifestyle first, Brian, and ask yourself like, what is the lifestyle that we want to lead? Let's just go ahead and say that you want to keep it the same. Okay. So maybe you see that you want to keep it the same. Well, is selling the business going to help you keep that and maintain it for a year, two years? What is that? Cause now we've given ourselves some time to actually go and think about what you want. I do this a lot with my male clients because often what happens is you get in a routine of going through and doing the business over and over again. And so we haven't ever given ourselves time to think about it. So that's what I want you to think of is maybe what you're doing is allowing yourself some space to actually think. So what do we think about? <laughs> I want you to think about what you want your time to look like. It sounds like you're probably not done. That's maybe why you're asking, like why you're saying like, well, what's next? It sounds like you're not ready to retire or be done. So let's kind of think about it from that perspective. So another thing is once again, we're just making decisions. Do I want to stay in the same industry or do something different? Sounds like you want to do something different. So now I've taken all of construction and we've put it to the side, the contract, right? Now you're like, okay, that's going to be to the side because maybe I don't want to do it. What else is available to me? Where do I have experience? Where is something new that maybe I haven't thought of before? So now you can see that you can start to make decisions really simply because you're just doing either or, right? You're just saying, do I want this or that? Now, one of the things that I love to do with all of my clients is something called everything is an option. It's one of my favorite exercises. And I want all of you here to really play around with this, with your goal. So what you do is you think about the goal. So for instance, Brian, let's say that you sell the business and now it's like a big blank space. You know, you want to work and you know, you want to keep your lifestyle about the same, whatever that is. Let's say it's $200,000. Okay. Okay. You need 200K to keep your lifestyle that you're living right now, okay? So now what? Everything is an option for you. 
Do you want to spend this whole day fishing? You're going to start a fishing company. Now, the reason that I love to do everything as an option is oftentimes we cut ourselves off from decisions because we don't allow ourselves to think that it's an option. That exercise of everything is an option allows us to see that we actually do want some things and we don't want other things. So play around with that. That's going to be your next step is your next step is going to be playing everything as an option and looking at the vision for the future. So when we talk about, well, the next step towards your goal, before we go after a goal, we need to go know what we're going after. So I want you to really spend some time doing this and come over on Instagram and tell me, like, tell me what you came up with. I'm really interested to know. Yeah. Brian says, yes. <laughs> he goes, that's the problem. I don't know what the goal is. And so it's hard to go after something. Yes. So that's sometimes we need to spend the time trying to decide what we want. So want it for yourself first, meaning that really like say that you are, you're like, yeah, fishing sounds amazing. But then what happens is we start to bring in everybody else like, oh, but then that's just doing a hobby. My wife doesn't like when I go fishing, but first just want things for yourself. And this is for everybody. When we're going after goals and desires. You have to want it first for yourself. And then you bring in other people. Then you say, how does this work with my family? Then we can logistically start to figure it out. So Brian, for sure, step number one, is vision for the future. Do that exercise of everything as an option and start to make decisions, okay? The next thing is then we're gonna go back up to the process that we just talked about on this, on this class. Okay, now here's the vision, here's the goal, here's the tasks and go from there. All right, anybody else? Q&A or wanting coaching? Yeah, Sarah. Sarah says, I wanna do this. And I know that there are some obstacles in the way. How do we get over obstacles when they just feel so big? Okay, great question. Obstacles are always, always, always going to just be opportunities. And sometimes what we need to get over an obstacle is experience. So for instance, I have a client that wants to write a book with a publisher. Now, everyone here can write a book. <laughs> could write a book today, self-publish, get it on Amazon, all the things. But for this client, they're like, no, I want a publisher. I want like a publishing house. I want an agent. And so we have to start with where we're at. Right. And so she's like, I don't have any of those things. So that's a big obstacle. She's like, I hear it's really hard to get a publisher. I hear this. So sometimes when we have the obstacles, what we want to do is we want to talk about experience. So when you talk about your obstacles, I want you to ask yourself what experiences you need in order to gain the skills to get over that obstacle. So if we're learning how to do something, then we have to learn the, the, the tools that I need to get over it. So when I ask this client, like, okay, you want to write with this person, that's an obstacle. You don't have an agent. You don't have a publishing house like, do you have an idea? And she's like, no. And I'm like, okay, well, it sounds like the first tool that you need to learn is how to write. You need to get some, like, all right, do you have a blog? Do you have a, you know, an outline? Do you know who you're talking to? And she's like, no. And I'm like, great. Now we have all of these experiences that you need to go and have in order to face the first obstacle, which is getting an agent. And I'm like, an agent needs to see that you've done something. Okay. So whenever we face an obstacle, think about tools that you need or experiences you need to have. If I'm starting a coaching business, but I haven't ever coached anybody, or I'm starting a coaching business and I don't have anybody to make offers to, then that's my first obstacle. My first obstacle is that I don't have enough people to make offers to. So then we come back, what tools or experiences do I need in order to have actual people to say no to me? <laughs> Aaron, like I said, sometimes no's are the best blessing because that means that you have people to talk to. So some people would be like, oh, I would love to get some no's. That means I made some offers. So once again, if I go up against an offer and I'm like, I have nobody to make offers to, then I ask myself, what tool or experience do I need? 
okay, well, what I probably need is I need to be able to talk to people a little bit more. I need to be able to talk either on social media or in person to people. And so that's the experience and the tools that you need. Um, there's a guy that I listened to on a podcast and he was talking about being an introvert. And he said, I knew that I needed to get over my fear of talking to people. So he said, I would go into a grocery store every single day and I would need to find four, I think it was four people, four new people to talk to every day and introduce myself and ask them a question. So that's what we're doing when we face obstacles is we're going up against them and realizing every single obstacle can be solved by learning from experience and opportunity. This has been so much fun. Thank you all for being here. If you have any questions you want to follow up, absolutely come and follow me on Instagram at drive your thoughts coaching. I love to interact with everybody over there. And I know that sometimes getting coached on a call can be a little bit intimidating, but I helped a couple of you. There's several more of you that we didn't get to your first steps. So come over and DM me and let's create more conversation around this. Because if you're leaving this call without knowing what your first step is, then I haven't done my job. So I want you to come over, DM me, tell me what the goal is and where you're at so that we can absolutely get you your next step. This has been so much fun. We'll see y'all later. Bye.